Week two wrapped up in the XFL with some major questions about the Vegas Vipers, both on and off the field. Some really bad optics here for the home opener against the D.C. Defenders Saturday night. Now, there have already been concerns about Cashman Field as the home of the Vipers, and I covered the history of that stadium on another video here on my channel. But when the crowd looks like this, it seems if really all the naysayers just could add more fuel to the fire that this thing really might not work in Vegas. Now, there's been a lot of hand-wringing about attendance and ratings, and maybe this is some overreaction as we are just a couple of weeks in, but... You know, some teams have yet to even play their first home game, but this one for the Vegas Vipers uh, honestly just looked like a disaster. All right, well, maybe I'm overreacting to what I saw on Saturday night, so let's bring in Ray Brewer from the Las Vegas Sun. Uh, Ray, what I saw on Saturday night, both on and off the field, was a little disturbing, and it might be disturbing to me if I was one of the few Vegas Viper fans that were on, that was on hand. Now, I know a lot of things went into it. There was some very bad weather. Um, what was your takeaway from Saturday night? Well, I, I think I, I hate to say this, but the XFL's return to Las Vegas was dominated by uh, a, a rainstorm, which if anybody out there is familiar with Vegas, uh, we don't get rain all too much. Right. So the probability was definitely uh, not for that to happen. But I just think that Vegas could not do anything offensively. They were arguably outcoached um, and it was an ugly loss. And I think they envisioned, you know, a packed stadium and a perfect almost spring weather day. Um, because remember, we were one of the original XFL cities and, and we loved it. Um, but it, it clearly wasn't that. It was a complete disaster. In fact, getting the XFL back here has had several hiccups in terms of finding the venue to play in um, just for them to have what you saw on Saturday an announced crowd there of 6,000 people. And I mean, that might've been generous, especially after halftime. It, we, you mentioned Cashman Field there, Ray. I know that wasn't the first choice for the XFL. I don't think it was the first choice for, for anyone to have a football team there. Um, is it going to be the right place uh, for the Vipers? Will this, will this thing catch on? So Cashman Field is like our initial stadium and it was built in the, the early eighties and it housed the triple a baseball team affiliated with the Padres. You know, I could tell you I was in the second grade and Kevin McReynolds hit a home run off the scoreboard. And we all have a great story from Cashman field, but throughout the decades, it's just become outdated. It needs a, it needs an overhaul. And the minor league baseball team finally got a new stadium in Summerlin, a nice area of town. It's like a big league stadium with a minor league team and a United Soccer League team, uh, not as good as the team in Louisville, but came in and, and it, was, it was perfect for them. It's kind of a, an area with a lot of Hispanic families. It's near downtown. It's pretty walkable. Um, and it, it was perfect. So the Vipers couldn't find anywhere to play. They were hoping to get a crack at Allegiant Stadium, couldn't get it done. They were looking even at Bishop Gorman High School, which is a very nice stadium in Summerlin. It, it's like a, a, a D2 college, very nice. And, you know, Gorman basically said no because there was no – the parking just wasn't going to exist. And so Cashman Field was kind of a last resort for both sides. And if that place is packed – and if the weather's okay, it's a decent night. But what you saw on Saturday was kind of the, the, the worst of the worst. And, you know, unfortunately, we in Las Vegas, we support winners. And if you're 0-2 and you're an ugly 0-2, <laughs> right. you're going to have some problems. And um, it, it is what it is. Right. When you, you're right. When you look at this team, they are – last in every statistical category that there is and you know offensively and defensively um so it feels like they're kind of starting from behind the eight ball here that i you know it's almost like a snake bitten franchise uh, to start off with you know they struggled in in the first game um they had that and then obviously really struggled in front of a bad crowd it's just i mean i don't want to be a fatalist here because you know as you mentioned you and i remember the Las Vegas Outlaws and what, you know, and how awesome that was to see them play at Sam Boyd Stadium and, you know, just how everybody gathered around that team and, and really supported it. But here we are two decades later, and I'm I'm starting to wonder, is is this, I mean, is this even going to last? 
Yeah, so one thing with the Outlaws is I remember their first game, like 2001 or two, right. or I think 2000. 2001, yeah. And I was in the press box that day. Don't want to sh- share my age, but <laughs> and I remember Dana Harvey or Carvey sitting right next to me. <laughs> right. I was I sat literally. I sat next right. to the guy the whole game, <laughs> and it was just a packed crowd and a cool concept. And um, you know, it was just a fun night. It was one of those like all time Vegas sporting moment nights, and. With Vegas, we've always known that we could host the one-off events, right? Pro Bowl, sign us up. Yep. Mayweather fight night, we're here. UFC, same deal. Uh, cool concert, that's Vegas. You know, a NASCAR race, rodeo. We've we've mastered hosting those those events that come in out of they bring great revenue. All the cocktail waitresses and valets, you know, have have, have good money that day. The one knock (laughs) was, can we do it for an entire season? And then the Golden Knights come in, and it's a perfect marriage. It's our team. It's not an expansion team. It's a week after this awful mass shooting in our town. They're playing for us, and we love this team. And then all of a sudden, all these other sports leagues are like, whoa, look what the Golden Knights did. We got to get to Vegas. Um, Vegas is tax-friendly. Players, they're going to want to come there. They're help. They're finding money to build this new stadiums, right? So now all of a sudden, the Raiders come. The A's are thinking about coming. NBA, everybody think is going to happen, right? We got a WNBT team that won the championship. And my fear with the Vipers is that what you saw on Saturday on TV, everybody else is seeing, and they're like, "Uh oh, <laughs> shoot, we go to Vegas and nobody's going to be at the game because." They got no affinity for us or no love for us. And, you know, if we're not that good, like if, you know, look at the A's. We're very close to getting the A's. They're lobbying right now at the Nevada legislature for tax breaks for stadium. What if the A's see this and they're like, "Uh uh-oh, we're going to Nashville. (laughs) Right. And I'm so, as somebody who's born and raised in Vegas, love this city, I worry that, I, I, I sure hope the next game, they, they give out a ton of free tickets. Yeah. And I sure hope that it's one of these days where it's like 70 degrees in Vegas. I might want to take my sunscreen with me because it was just a combination of like zero marketing. Half of the city didn't even know they were playing. Right. And then it's just a bad weather. You know, it's tough. You've seen football and baseball stadiums, right? The, pinstripe bowl at yankee stadium right. they've done things at fenway um uh in san francisco there's been games and it looks a little funky but it works and this this not only did it look funky it just really didn't work and then yeah. you parlay the weather and then the team was just so bad i mean dc i think uh they ran the same two plays basically the entire second half and there was because zero, it kept working, right? <laughs> yeah, and there was zero like ability for Rod Woodson and his staff to kind of identify what was happening to change things up to stop it. And you know, you've seen glimpses of, of Vegas playing well, right? First game, yeah. they had a great drive to start. The quarterback looked like he was, you know, going to be in the NFL tomorrow. He's going to replace Rodgers with the Packers. <laughs> and then next thing you know, it's it's like it's just you know, pick six here. Um, it just looks really bad. And, and unfortunately it masks some decent players on defense for Vegas. And, and the fact that we are a, a decent little sports city, but there's zero attachment to the Vipers. Um, it's just, it's like they're here. It's like, you know, Celine Dion, right? She's going to be perform at resorts world tonight. She doesn't live here, but her music is great. And because she sings, we're going to go. Well, just because it's football doesn't necessarily mean you've got to go. It's not a football team in residence there that uh, that's really going to draw the crowd. It, yeah. You know, you brought up you brought up some good points there, Ray, because you talked about how people started these teams and franchises started and continue to start to flock to Vegas. To me, it felt like the XFL wanted a team in Vegas so much they kind of shoehorned it in. Like we're going to say there's going to be the Vegas Vipers, and now we're going to try to find a place to play. And this really has just uh, 
it didn't start off the right way and it does not two weeks in here at least doesn't look like it's going the right way yeah and 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 that's the thing if if they could have got the team in Allegiant Stadium it would have been okay yeah. if they even went to Las Vegas ballpark which is where our triple a team plays now that would have been okay as well but to basically go to your third option, a local high school. Granted, National Power has won national championships in darn fine facilities. Okay, it, it's it's a little entertaining, but you'd sell that place out. Um, Ca- Cashman Field, it, it just it just it looks even worse when nobody's there. And then you pat you factor in the rain and just an ugly game. And the end result is, you know, what, what we saw, unfortunately, on, on Saturday. Well, you know, you, you and I have beaten up here on, on the Vipers. Do you have, and although you, you mentioned yeah, Rod Woodson and that, and his staff just didn't seem to figure it out in the second half, do you feel like that they can? Do you have any kind of optimism here that they can turn this around? You know, they brought in Brett Hundley, who'd been like with the team for two weeks, and he ended up having to play in the second half. Can, can they figure this out and maybe turn this into something that everyone in Vegas wants to come see? Well, I, I do like Brett Hundley. Um, he, he's got, you know, great experience in the NFL, and he's I, – I just think the game is is probably a little too fast um, for, for Luis Perez, and – I, I'd, I'd like to see Brett Hundley get a chance with with ideal weather conditions because he does have that NFL experience. He backed up Rodgers with the Packers for a while, um, had an above average career at UCLA. He's a pro, um, but regardless of who the quarterback is, they got to find a way to rush the ball. And right, who knows if 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 Rod Smith is a good running back or not because the guys only carried the ball like. 10 or 11 times in two games. And the, 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 the old adage in football for me is you got to run the ball, right? You run the ball to win and you pass – or you run the ball to – whatever the adage is. <laughs> you had to set up the pass is what a lot of coaches always say. Yeah, run. yeah. But nevertheless, the, the running game is non-existent. Yeah. And when you have an ability to constantly – and granted, they've been behind, so they've been playing from behind. Yeah. But when you when you're constantly passing, and the defense is just rushing the quarterback over and over and over again, and you can't complete a pass. Like I do think the XFL, for all the like minor league pro football franchises, and I, I guess it's fair to call it minor league, right? I mean, it's it's not the NFL. I think we can all agree on that. But I think I think that actually is one step beneath the NFL, whereas like the other league that's going on probably isn't as good. And I think Luis Perez might've had success in that league, but the game got a little quicker in the XFL. And that, that, that small difference was, is, is visible on every play. I think, you know, after that first drive in week one, he got figured out pretty quick and, Las Vegas has made zero adjustments from what I could tell. Not, not a football coach. Right. Um, but from an outsider looking in, um, they just – they look painfully unprepared. It, uh, that is a very good way to put it. Here's, here's what I'll tell you. Here's, here's some optimism for you, Ray. Saturday they host Seattle. Both teams are going to be 0-2, so someone's got to win this one. It's a 7 o'clock Eastern time, 4 o'clock Pacific time game. Lows in the 60s, and for right now as we record this – no chance of rain in the forecast. So maybe this will be, maybe this, everything may, might turn around here on Saturday night. Yeah. I mean, the, 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 it has the opportunity to, I, I will tell you this going into the season. I like Seattle to win the whole thing. Uh, I'm a big fan of the quarterback, the and yeah. I, I believe he's, he's had one bad interception, one unfortunate interception and he's been a pretty darn good quarterback. I think Seattle's a bad 0-2, but a, a, a must win for, for both teams ex- yep. uh, without question. And I think for Vegas, somewhere along the way, they've got to, they've got to garner some interest. And it's tough when 40% of your home season is going to be over after Saturday. Good point. And you haven't really impact, made that much of an impact in the community. 
Well, hopefully there'll be some better marketing. And, you know, frankly, you're right. Uh, it, it, just for optics sake, uh, you, maybe you need to paper the stadium because you, you've got to get you've got to get some better optics. And, you know, football is a TV product. And I think the XFL is doing something that's a lot different than what the USFL did last year. They're trying to make this a traditional league with home fans. And, you know, may, maybe it can work, but uh, we'll see what happens on Saturday night. Ray Brewer from the Las Vegas Sun. Appreciate uh, your time, and uh, we'll be looking forward to reading you and seeing how how we uh, how these Vegas Vipers turn out. Will they be a success, or or maybe or maybe continue to be a disaster? 